Welcome to Infinity Capital everyone. This is Raj. So today we are going to talk about Sandhar Technologies. It's an auto component company. So Sandhar Technologies makes the following products. They make uh, locks, aluminium die casting, sheet metal components, cabins, assemblies, mirrors and other products, right? 58% of their total revenue comes from uh, uh, the auto components that they provide to two wheeler and three wheeler market. 21% uh, comes from the four wheeler segment, 14% comes from OHV and tractors and 7% comes from other companies, other uh, segments, right? So they, they have a huge list of clients, Royal Enfield, Suzuki, TBS, Honda, Tata, SML, Ashok, Leyland, so on and so forth. And their top two clients are TVS Motors and Hero Motor Corp. So we'll just go and check TVS Motors. What are the numbers like? So June, you know, the numbers are pretty good. If you see, they did sales of 4689 crores. And if we go back before COVID, so, you know, before COVID, before March 2020, they were doing an average sales of around 4,700 crores. So the sales are back to normal, back to pre-COVID levels, right? If you compare it to the whole of 2019, they were doing around 4,800, 4,900 crores of sales. Currently they did, you know, around 6,000 and 4,000, so roughly 5,000 crores of sales they've done for this year, right? So then the sales for TVS are back to pre-COVID levels. So this is one good thing in terms of getting a understanding of whether the sales are rising. Why we are looking at TVS? Because Sandhar's 58% revenue comes from two and three wheelers. So it's important to know how the sales in the two wheeler segment is doing. So overall, the picture looks pretty good. And that is the reason why we are also looking at this stock. All right. Uh, top 10 customers contribute to about 83% of revenues to the company. So there is obviously customer concentration, right? So if they were to lose one or two customers, it can impact their uh, sales and profitability. However, what we need to understand, it's not very easy to just switch their vendors, right? They have long standing uh, relationships with their vendors and it becomes very difficult just to switch a vendor so easily. So unless and until Sandhar is not providing the right quality of products that the customers want, they usually don't switch so easily, right? 85% uh, of the uh, revenue is coming from domestic market. 15% of the re revenue comes from their operations in Europe, right? So they have a company in Barcelona, Spain. Okay. They have around 40 manufacturing facilities and uh, they have jvs and subsidiaries as well so one of the subsidiaries is in uh, barcelona they have two facilities in spain and one in mexico okay apart from that they have multiple technical collaborations so these collaborations help them they get the intellectual property the ip the technol technology from them and then they collaborate or probably give some sort of uh, royalty to these companies so they have entered into 11 JV for technical collaborations. So they have invested around 75 crores in 2020 for this. Now we are going to quickly go through uh, the ratings and uh, something interesting that I'd like to show you. So this company's IPO came in March 2018 and uh, they raised around 300 crore rupees of fresh, from fresh issue of shares. However, post that, there was a PE investor which made an exit. So they sold around 64 lakh shares, right? And if you see the company's total number of shares is six crores, roughly around six crores. So this PE investor sold around 64 lakh shares, roughly around 10% of the total uh, shares of the company. And that is the reason why when we come here and we check that that is one of the primary reasons why the stock also went down, you know, so much because uh, after 2018, their profits have flatlined, their profits have not fallen a lot. In fact, in 2019, their profits grew, their sales also grew. 
So overall, there was not any problem with respect to profitability in the company. If you see the profit margins are also stable. The fact that we've had two devastating years of COVID, there has been absolutely no impact in in their margins, which means that they command some sort of respect pricing power for the products that they are selling, right? So, so this is something that that is uh, that was because you know after an IPO suddenly you have ten ten percent of the shares being sold in the open market it becomes difficult for the stock price to you know continue to go sideways or go up because there is huge supply so if you see post post ipo the stock went sideways you know for 5 6 months and then it corrected so from the list after the listing it went down by 63% and from its all time high the stock went down by 72% so something to uh, keep a note of guys in the future if you have some company which did a fresh ipo and the pe investors are selling plus you know if there is a problem in the industry you know it can really hammer the stock so let's just go and see the uh, presentation so this is the investor presentation that you can find on the on the company's website right so overall these are the places where they have their manufacturing facilities and uh, technical collaboration they have technical collaboration from south korea japan taiwan right so these are the pl places where they have their technical collaborations and spain poland romania and mexico is where they have their facilities abroad okay so this is what the product revenue looks like aluminium die casting you know that that contributes to around 28 percent proprietary business 25 percent sheet metal 14 cabins 14 assemblies 8 others 13. so their key customers are tvs hero royal enfield suzuki in the two-wheeler segment in the passenger vehicle segment honda bosch commercial vehicles they have tata motors sml ashok leyland you know mahindra ohv they have caterpillar tata hitachi Hyundai some big names in here three wheelers you know mahindra tvs some very big names in there i'd like to show you a couple of other things how they forward into the electrical vehicle segment as well so these are the products that they are making ignition switch locking system latch system hook striker mirrors so mirrors are definitely going to be used in whether it's a normal car or an electric car wheel assembly will definitely need wheels you need locks so as as bad as the <laughs> the electric ev industry makes it sound that a lot of companies are going to lose business it's not that bad there are a lot of parts which are irre irreplaceable right so let's just check seat belt retractor components you know seat belt seat belt safety systems electrical drives front wiper you definitely need wiper whether it's an electric car or a normal car right you need you need lighting control systems irrespective of the fact whether it's an it's a electric car or a ice engine right so they have forayed into the electric vehicle segment and these are the products that they are making these are the companies that they are catering to so pretty good right so ignition switch lock latch system door handles you you definitely need door handles battery locking system so on and so forth so they are supplying stuff uh, products to Ola Electric as well. So Ola has set up a huge factory in India. Hero Electric, Hero is also forayed into electric, right? Uh, then they have these relays. These are important uh, uh, components, right? Rear view camera. Most cars have these days shark fin and antenna, right? So these these pro these uh, products are not going to go. Uh, you know out they'll still be there you'll still need a f antenna on the car whether it is electric or an ice engine okay so these are the the uh, these are the uh, products that they are making apart from that most cars are have a lot of electric uh, systems in it so you know they are making these uh, systems these panels switches very 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 important 10 years ago cars did not have so many electrical systems today cars have all this most systems in the cars are electrical so this business is going to survive you know even though it switches over to electric now 
the company is uh, giving uh, a revenue uh, sort of a kagar they are saying that they are expecting to grow at 30% but even if they grow at 20% or 18 to 20% their current sales revenue is around 2000 crores so if they are you know uh, if they are uh, growing at 20% so 2144 so uh, you know 20% per annum that comes to 60% in 3 years so around they increase their sales by around 1 to 86 okay and on top of on top of that if you take uh, say 10% margin so assuming that their margins remain the same they do uh, so they do around 100 and uh, 128 crores of profits right so overall we can expect that currently they are doing 91 crores of profit so we can expect the profits to go up by around 120 130% right so if the rev- if the revenues go up by by you know by 60% profits go up by 100 130% we can expect a good up move in this stock right okay uh, also let's check the june quarter numbers the sales are higher obviously last june the number is pretty low because we were in a very strict lockdown no movement whatsoever so you know this this will definitely look higher okay uh also i would like to show you something very interesting um if you if you know, if you look at the profit and loss if you look at the pre covid levels pre covid they were doing roughly on a 3 4 year average they were doing ab- about 18 90 100 crores of sales and currently their sales are above the average so if you take the average of 16 to 19 the average must be 18 17 1800 crores of sales per year currently they have they are doing 21 2200 crores of sales so you know so that's the this year sale only is much higher than the average of uh, 16 to 19 right and uh, when the company got listed the uh, the profits were around 65 crores and then they flatlined and now they have po- the, the trailing 12 month profits are at 91 crores right so the numbers coming in are pretty encouraging and if this keeps going higher we can expect good returns in this stock right so uh, let's do the pe evaluation also so you know the current pe is around 18 the median pe is around 26 so let's assume that the stock goes at the medium pe of around 26 into 15.2 which is the current eps we can expect the stock to reach at least 393 400 levels this is what i am this is what i am expecting right now so the stock is currently trading at 276 so 393 minus 276 that's around 117 rupees from here on so around 40 45 50% upside is what i am expecting another thing what we need to keep in mind guys is that in 2018 when the stock got listed it was doing 65 crores of profits 1946 crores of sales currently it is doing 20, 2144 crore of sales and 91 crore of profits so if you remove 91 minus 65 their profits are up by around 40% right so when we come on the chart we'll see that in 2018 since 2018 the profits have g- gone up by 40% however what is happening to the stock the stock is down by 20% right and if the if the so according to me the ideally the price of this the stock should be at least up by 50 to 60% from the current pr- levels considering the fact that you know the profits are coming in there is no deterioration in the profit margins and the sales are continuously rising right so let's look at it from a technical front so what you'll notice guys that as i told you earlier that you know this private equity firm sold 10% of the shares of the company that was one of the major reasons why the stock was continuously falling if you'll notice that the stock traded between 240 and 300 for a very long time so between jan 
and uh, March 2020, the stock was trading in this range, post which it broke down. Right. So there are a lot of people who may be stuck here, and every time the stock goes comes into this range, it you know it sort of uh, it is feeling the selling pressure. So you know there is some sort of supply over here. Right. So so what are we looking for? You know, in terms of a uh, terms of technical analysis, what sort of positioning I am looking for? So I'll be looking. Basically, the stock has been trading above the 200-day moving average since August 2020, right? So it is taking support around the 200-day mo moving average. The 50-day moving average is also trending upwards, right? Now this weekly chart, uh, this uh, I'm not so worried about this because uh, you know if you look at the daily. Uh, this uh, happened on the um, earnings day. So I I discount the earnings day and one one day prior and one day after. I always discount three days of uh, trading because there's too much. You know, it's it's a lot of sentimental trade, emotional trade, right? Post which I like to see what's happening in the stock. So, you know, I I am looking to accumulate the stock between this zone. This is the zone between 240 and 270. I'll be looking to accumulate the stock. I don't mind buying it a little higher also. So let's see, you know, how it is trading for the next week or two, right? So I'll be looking to accumulate this stock between 240 and 280. What sort of returns I'm expecting? So I'm expecting at least 50 to 60 percent returns, right? So you know, it, I'm expecting it to go at to reach at least at least its previous high which is around 60 percent higher right so this is my uh, this is what i am looking for so overall this is the area where people are stuck this is the area where people are stuck so once the supply is out of this zone you know we'll see a massive rally in this stock overall the numbers also look pretty great so every every dip according to me is a buying opportunity in this stock a uh, quick disclaimer guys this is an educational video this is not a buy sell recommendation thanks a lot for watching